Hey everyone, what we're going to do today is a bucktail jig uh, in my, my uh, peanut butter and jelly pattern. In the vise we have a quarter ounce football head with a one owner 5318 jig hook. Uh, the color is a new paint that I've been working with this year called Crawdad. Really like it. It's got some really fine black and orange specks in it. Um, a darker peanut butter type color, a darker pumpkin color. Um, and this bucktail is one that I use primarily in cold water, mostly for smallmouth. Uh, when I'm fishing river smallmouth, I'm making this in an eighth ounce head with a, a size one, uh, 53.18. And in the lake, it's the quarter ounce. The reason for the, the owner 5318 is because it's um, a light hook. It's a light wire hook, but it's very strong and it's really sharp. You're not setting the hook really hard with this. Most of the bites I get on it are like having wet leaves. You're feeling that weight and then you're just reeling up and leaning on it. Uh, you, the hook is that sharp. You don't need to set the hook really hard. Uh I'm usually fishing this on a medium or medium light uh, fast action rod. And you want maybe eight pound line. If I, on the eight ounce, I'm fishing this on six pound line. This one I'm fishing on eight. And I'm using a medium powered rod. Of course, my drag set light. Um, using the right tackle, this thing is really effective. So we're going to get started. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is take some super glue brush on and I'm going to put a little bit here on the hook shank. And we're going to use some brown 210 denier flat wax nylon thread. And we're going to make our base. And this is going to be for a trailer keeper. I'm going to cut the tag end off here. Make a few more wraps, just enough that we could cover the keeper. Now I'm going to take this little keeper. I made it myself out of a longer one. I cut down the barb and I put a little bend in it. And the reason you're going to show you why you want that bend in it in a second here. We're going to take some more Loctite Super Glue brush on. Whatever brand you're using uh, is fine. And I'm going to lay this on here. And you see I put that little bend in there. That's basically to keep it from sliding down. And another thing I did, which I'm going to show you in a second, as you can see, the base only goes down here, but I have this open area. You can see it's sticking up. And I'll show you why I did that, why I didn't go all the way down. Now I'm going to go down and tighten that up and then go back again. Now you see that that gap is closed. This base is going to push that keeper up off the shank and a hook a little bit. So I only have the base going down so far and you've seen that open area. Now when I tighten that down, it bends it down and now you always have pressure on these threads. So that will never come loose by doing it that way. You don't have to go overkill on the thread if you do it like that. It'll keep some pressure there and it'll always be tight. Um, a lot of these, by the way, I'll tell you is I tie without the keeper because I don't use a trailer on this a whole lot. Uh, normally I'm fishing this without the trailer probably 75% of the time, but when I do use the trailer, it's usually on this uh, quarter ounce version that I use in lakes. And it's usually um, in a little bit warmer water temperatures. I'm fishing this uh, 55 degrees on down in the, into the 40s. So, we got our keeper tied on there. And the next thing we're going to do 
is I'm going to cut off a little piece of this, which is just plain brown chenille, just to have. And we're going to take some more super glue brush on. I'm going to put it up here on the collar because, as you see, there's no uh, ring or barb or anything to hold my thread. So the glue is going to help lock my thread that it doesn't slide down. And once I get my base on here, I'm just going to trim this off. And now I'm going to take my little piece of brown chenille. And you can see where I cut this barb off right here on the, the lead collar. That's kind of where I'm going to put this. I don't even have to worry about just tying this in by the thread. Uh, I'm not worried about it creating a little lump. I just want to get it tied in and uh, put across. All this is going to do is... Uh, I could tie it in pretty heavy and make it so I can have um, a little bit more flare, but it's not for that. This is basically a stopping point for my collar, so that way I don't make a real long lead collar. It gives me a stopping point. It makes it easier for me to tie, and um, it doesn't hurt at all. It actually, you could turn it up and use this as a, uh, a scent sponge because you don't want the scent on the natural hair so you could turn it up and you can actually put a little bit of scent on this little chenille if you want to use it you don't have to I do it like I said it helps keep my collars uniform so the first thing we're gonna do here now that we got everything set up is we're gonna use some this is camel a color called camel bucktail and I'm not gonna link it in the description because you might have to go I've had to go to eBay to find this color um, a lot of places sell it but it's always sold out I don't know if they don't produce a lot of it or if it sells a lot I'm not sure but just go to eBay and look for a uh, camel bucktail uh, camel color what I used to do for this pattern originally was it was pumpkin brown head, and I used ginger um, colored bucktail, which is a little bit lighter than this. This is really nice. And I have my friend uh, Hank Snow to thank for this. Uh, you could check him out on YouTube, Hank Snow Outdoors. Uh, I didn't even know this color existed. For as long as I've been doing this, I've never seen it. And he was the one uh, that brought it to my attention. So I ended up finding some, picking it up, and it works great for this pattern. Uh, really nice color. So we're going to tie this in first. And I'm going to have it that it's maybe an inch to an inch and a half um, at the most. And, but anywhere from three quarters of an inch to an inch and a half beyond the hook point, beyond the hook bend, I should say. And I'll trim that up. And we'll tie that in. I'm going to make two loose wraps. And I'm just going to manipulate it that we get around the hook, around the, the jig. And maybe three quarters of the way around. So that looks pretty good because I got another clump to tie in. I'm just going to two more wraps to secure it that it doesn't move anywhere on me. And I'm going to take another clump, line it up with what we already have tied in. This is what I was talking about with um, that roadkill pattern. The pattern's always evolved. As there's new paint that I try or find a new color material. Um, now, I didn't try it, like, I haven't fished this particular uh, color yet. I will this fall into the winter, um, depending on what the weather is like. And once I get that to where I like it, we'll start buttoning it down. 
I have some short ones here that I need to pull out. So far, so good. Now we have that tied in. Um, still got still got a few short ones that get stuck in here. There we go. Now we're gonna take the jelly part, which is purple bucktail, and this is uh, I had to pull out some of these longer ones and stack it. That it's not. Sometimes you get some real long ones and they're out of place compared to the rest of your clump of bucktail. So I just pull a few of them out to even them up a little bit. You don't want it completely even. You want that taper, but uh, you don't want a bunch of them that are real long either. That it'll stand out, especially with the way we're going to tie these in. I'm going to tie this in just like I did on my um, older um, river smallmouth style jig. And that is, I like to put this secondary color on top of the first one, but I'm not extending it all the way down. This is going to be um, about a quarter inch shorter than the camel that we already have tied in. So I'm going to mark that off and I'm going to trim it and we'll tie this in. So that way you have like a, a, a separate color, almost like a collar. If you did this with feathers, um, it would be a it would be a collar, basically, and that's what we're doing. And you want to distribute this around. Don't worry that you see the camel or you see it that's a little sparse here or there. You kind of want that. You want it to have that translucent effect because you want the main color to show through. Um, whether it matters to the fish or not, I doubt. But I always thought it looked really neat in the water and. Um, it hasn't hurt, let's put it that way. The fish have really um, responded well to this pattern. And I got one of them long ones in here. I don't know if you could see it. It's way up here. I'm just going to pull that out and realign it with what I already have. And now we're good. And I'm going to trim that off to match the other hair we already have tied in. Two wraps. I'm splitting the hook here. I'm pulling the hair on each side of the hook. And I'm just going to distribute that around that we don't have any odd looking gaps. It looks pretty good. So I'm going to start cranking this down. And I am going to tie with a lot of pressure. It's bucktail, uh, so you definitely want to uh, put a lot of pressure on it. Otherwise, if you you don't, it could slip on you. And making sure this collar is really nice and tight to prevent that. And see it with that chenille there. If I wouldn't have had that, I probably would end up going a little further. And it would be longer than I, I like with my collar. Not that it's going to hurt anything. Just for me, I didn't like. I don't like that look. So that's just about perfect. Cinch one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six. Cinch it and trim it off here. We're going to use our Loon uh, water-based head cement. I really like this stuff. Uh, again, the more I use it, the better I like it. A little more expensive. If you're using Sally Hansen's or the Super Glue, um, go right ahead. That works fine. I've used it for years. Like I said, I'm only using this for a couple of months now. and um, So I'm still relatively new to it, but 
I'm really digging it just for the fact I don't have to worry about getting a little bit on my material because it's not going to have any kind of weird color in a um, difference. So now I'm going to pull my shorts out. No, oh, we're pretty good. We must have got them all. Um, we're just about done. The last thing is going to be our trailer. Uh, again, I, I told you I don't use a trailer on this most of the time, but to show you what that wire keeper is for and why I trim that little barb down on the keeper, um, this is the bottom half of a straight tail finesse worm. This is a River Rock Bait, um, a River Rock Bait's SM Killer in a color called Purple Haze. And I really, really like their baits. They're really soft. And I don't tear them up just for trailers. This is a four and a half inch finesse worm that I fish a lot. And when they get torn up because they're really soft, I don't throw them out. I save them and then I harvest the tails to use as trailers. It's another way of being frugal. You can never be too frugal, I say. You can get carried away with it, but you, uh, it's always a... You wouldn't believe what you could say with material-wise, just finding other uses for it. So I just line it up. I, there's a little flat spot on this particular one, but any straight tail finesse worm will do. And we center it, slide it up on. And there we go. Let me get a clamp here that you could see it without my fingers getting in the way. I know on the camera the bucktail looks blue, but trust me, it's purple. That's kind of the, the profile you get with this thing, trying to show it all different angles. Um, in the lake, though, that's you're pulling it along, it'll tip up like that. You're tail will go up in the air. That is a great cold water profile. Um, I imagine this would work in warm water, but for me, I like I said, I use this primarily as a cold water deal, um, mostly small mouths, but I have taken large mouth on it. So uh, give it a shot. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.